Today I shall talk on breach presentation. This is the commonest mal presentation where the lie is longitudinal and the podalic pole presents at the pelvic bream. The incidence is 20% at 28 weeks. However, it reduces to around 5% at 38 weeks and 3 to 4% at term pregnancy. So, what are the varieties of breach presentation? So, basically, there are two varieties. One is complete breach or flex breach. Here, the normal attitude of full flexion is maintained. That is, the thighs are flexed at the hips and the legs at the knees. So, the presenting part are the two buttocks along with the external genitalia and the two feet. This variety is common in multigravidas. Next is incomplete breach. So, here there is varying degree of extension of the fetus either at the knee joint or at the hip joint. So, these are of three varieties. One is frank breach where uh, the, the thighs are flexed on the trunk and the legs are extended at the knee joint so that the presenting part consists of the two buttocks and the external genitalia and this variety is common in primary gravida. Next is footling presentation where the thighs and the legs are partially extended so that the two feet becomes the presenting part. The third variety is knee presentation where the thighs are extended but the knees are flexed so that the knees come down and present at the brim. What are the etiologies of breech presentation? Commonest is prematurity. Next, factors preventing spontaneous version. These include extended legs, multiple pregnancy, oligohydramnios, congenitally malformed uterus, short umbilical cord, and intrauterine fetal death. Conditions where there is favorable adaptation like hydrocephalus, placenta previa, and contracted pelvis. Undue mobility of the fetus like hydramnios and multipara with lax abdominal wall. And certain fetal abnormalities like various types of trisomies, anencephaly, and myotonic dystrophy. How do we diagnose a case of breach presentation? So it may be diagnosed by clinical examination or by ultrasonography. Clearly. Coming to the clinical examination. So first I shall discuss complete breach. So here in fundal grip, we can feel the hard globular mass which is bellotable. On lateral grips, we can feel the fetal back on one side and the limbs on the other side. By doing a pelvic grip, we can feel the breach which is a soft, broad, irregular mass and usually it is not engaged during, the, during pregnancy. Fetal heart sound is usually located at a higher level around the umbilicus. On per vaginal examination, soft irregular parts are usually felt and of the, if the patient happens to be in labor, we may feel the ischial tuberosities, the sacrum and the feet by the sides of the buttocks. In frank breach, the head is felt but usually it is non bellotable due to the splinting action of the legs on the trunk. Irregular small parts of the feet may be felt by the side of the head. In the lateral grip again, uh, irregular parts are less felt on the side because they are generally present along with the head in the fundal part of the uterus. On pelvic grip, we can feel a small hard conical mass and it is usually engaged. The fetal heart sound is therefore at a lower level. In, by doing a PV examination, we can feel the sacrum, which may be sometimes mistaken for the head because it is harder in consistency. And the ischial tuberosities and anal opening and the sacrum are felt if the patient is in labor, but the feet cannot be felt. And next, we go for ultrasonography. Not only it helps us to establish the diagnosis, but it can give, give us several other additional informations like we can detect any associated fetal congenital 
abnormality which is quite common with breach presentation then the type of breach presentation then the fetal growth parameters localization of the placenta the lyca volume assessment and the attitude of the fetal head now in breach presentation the sacrum is considered as the denominator there are four positions first is a left, left sacro anterior second the right sacro anterior third right sacro posterior and the fourth position is the left sacro posterior so what is the mechanism of labor in breech presentation now the engaging diameter as far as the buttocks are concerned is the bitrochanteric diameter which is 10 cm descent occurs until the anterior buttock touches the pelvic floor this is followed by internal rotation of the anterior buttock through one eighth of a circle there is further descent with lateral flexion of the trunk followed by delivery of the trunks and the lower limbs this is followed by restitution so that the buttocks go and acquire the original position next we are concerned with the delivery of the shoulder here the engaging diameter is bisacromial diameter which is 12 cm it's a big diameter descent occurs along with internal rotation of the shoulders so that it occupies the entero posterior diameter of the pelvis then there is delivery of the posterior shoulder followed by the anterior one completed by anterior flexion of the trunk followed by again restitution and external rotation finally the delivery of the head for delivery of the head engagement occurs through the opposite oblique diameter or the transverse diameter there is descent with increasing flexion followed by internal rotation of the occiput anteriorly further descent occurs until the subocciput hinges under the symphysis pubis the head is now borne by flexion that is the chin mouth nose forehead vertex and the occiput are delivered successively what is the prognosis of vaginal breech delivery the maternal morbidity is slightly increased because of increased oper operative interference there is also increased chance of trauma to the genital tract perinatal mort mortality is considerable in vaginal breech delivery the perinatal death rate excluding congenital abnormalities is 3 to 5 times higher in breech presentation what are the dangers to the baby there is risk of intrapartum fetal death especially with preterm babies there is risk of injury to the brain and the skull intracranial hemorrhage usually occurs because of sudden compression of the fetal head followed by decompression during delivery of the unmolded after coming head resulting in tear of the tentorium cerebelli and hemorrhage in the subarachnoid space this risk is higher in preterm babies there is risk of birth asphyxia which may be due to cord compression it may be due to retraction of the placental side it may be due to premature attempt at respiration while the head is still inside it may also be due to delayed delivery of the head or due to cord prolapse several birth injuries are possible like hematomas fractures visceral injuries and nerve injuries the mortality in case of breech vaginal breech delivery is highest in footling presentation because here the risk of cord prolapse is maximum gynecoid and anthropoid pelvis are favorable for the after coming head uh, after coming head the risk in multipara and primi gravida are comparable coming to the management part so during the antenatal period you should identify the complicating factors related with breech presentation if there are no contraindications we go for external cephalic version but if it is con contraindicated or if it fails then we may go for the cesarean section or we plan a vaginal breech delivery
External cephalic version, it is a procedure. It is done to bring the favorable cephalic pole in the lower pole of the uterus. The timing is usually 36 weeks onwards. If done at an early period, there is increased chance of reverse, reversion back to breech presentation. Moreover, if any fetal complications develop, we may go for immediate scissor section if it is done beyond 36 weeks. If it, is, uh, if it needs to be done earlier, the fetal morbidity will be higher. Cardiotocography should ideally be done both before and after this procedure. Also, ultrasonography should be done prior to the procedure. The success rate is around 65%. The benefits are it helps to reduce the incidence of breach presentation and at, at term. There, therefore, it helps to reduce the incidence of caesarean section. What are the indications of caesarean section in breech presentation? Big baby, that is estimated fetal weight over 3.5 kg. Small baby, that is less than 1.5 kg. When there is hyperextension of the fetal head, that is why in sonography we look for attitude of the fetal head. Next is footling presentation as there is maximum risk of cord prolapse. Whenever we suspect pelvic contraction, or severe IUGR or any other associated complications. Criteria to be fulfilled in trying for vaginal breech delivery. Fetal weight has to be average, that is between 1.5 to 3.5 kg. Fetal head is to be in flexed attitude. Pelvic, pelvis has to be adequate. There should not be any other associated complications. There should be availability of facilities for emergency caesarean section, facilities for continuous labor monitoring, presence of an obstetrician experienced with vaginal breech delivery, and most important is informed consent of the patient and her attendant. How do we manage the first stage? Vaginal examination is indicated at the onset of labor for pelvic assessment and also soon after rupture of the membranes to exclude cord prolapse. An IV line is started with ringer solution and oral intake is avoided because patient may eventually land up in caesarean section. Blood is sent for grouping and cross matching. Adequate analgesia is given. The progress of labor is monitored frequently as well as the fetal status. If labor is not progressing well, we may go for augmentation by giving an oxytocin infusion. Now there are three methods in the, to be uh, applied in the second stage of labor. So there may be spontaneous breach delivery, that is with very little assistance. This occurs in around 10% of the cases. The preferred method is assisted breach delivery where the assistance of the obstetrician is required from the beginning to the end. And the third option is breech extraction, where part or the entire body of the fetus is extracted by the obstetrician, that is almost pulled out by the obstetrician. Now, assisted breech delivery. The patient is brought to the table when the anterior buttock and the fetal anus are visible. We always prefer a lateral tilt of the lady by 15 degrees so as to avoid aortocable compression not only in bridge delivery but any other delivery. Next antiseptic dressing is done, bladder is emptied, pudendal block is given if epidural analgesia is not used. Episiotomy should be made in all cases of primary gravida and selected multipara. The patient is encouraged to bear down. A no-touch policy of the fetus is adopted until the buttocks are delivered along with the legs in flex bridge. So the main way of delivering is by asking the patient to bear down. The trunk up to the umbilicus is born. The extended legs in frank bridge are then to be decomposed. 
by applying pressure on the knees that is the popliteal fossa in a manner of abduction and flexion of the thighs the cord is pulled down and mobilized to one side to avoid compression if the back remains posteriorly the trunk is rotated so that it comes anteriorly the baby is wrapped with a sterile towel to prevent sleeping when held by the hands next delivery of the arms the arms are delivered delivered one after the other only when one axilla is visible by simply hooking one by simply hooking down each elbow with a finger finally the delivery of the after coming head so there are three methods of delivering the fetal head one is burns marshall method next is forceps delivery and the third option is muller flexion and shoulder traction what is burns marshall method the baby's trunk is allowed to hang by its own weight own weight for a while once the nape of the neck is visible under the pubic arc the baby's trunk is gradually lifted up and swing up towards the mother's abdomen by catching hold of the baby's legs just above the ankles meanwhile the left hand is used to guard the perineum and the head is slowly delivered coming to forceps delivery we may use either the dust variety of forceps or the piper's forceps the advantages with forceps delivery are delivery can be controlled by giving pull directly on the head and the force is not transmitted through the neck there is better maintenance of flexion flexion attitude of the fetal head mucus can be effectively sucked out from the mouth when the occiput lies against the back of the symphysis pubis the assistant raises the leg of the fetus so as to facilitate introduction of the forceps blades from below the head is then slowly delivered to reduce compression and decompression forces on the fetal head next is the delivery by the method of muller flexion and shoulder traction also known as the modified morisio smelly weight technique here the baby is placed on the supinated left forearm of the obstetrician with the limbs hanging on either side the middle and index fingers of the left hand are placed over the malar bones on either side the ring and little fingers of the pronated right hand are placed on the child's right shoulder and the index finger is placed on the left shoulder and the middle finger is placed on the suboccipital region now traction is given in downward and backward direction till the neck of the till the nape of the neck is visible simultaneously the assistant gives suprapubic pressure to maintain flexion the fetus is then carried in upward and forward direction successively releasing the face the brow and finally the trunk is depressed to release the occiput and the vertex the third stage is usually uneventful however active management is to be done as it is done in all other cases to prevent postpartum hemorrhage often the baby is found asphyxiated so resuscitation has to be done in such cases now coming to the management of complicated bridge delivery if the outlet is contracted or the baby is big we opt for cesarean section in the absence of outlet contraction or fetal pelvic disproportion we prefer to go for liberal episiotomy and fundal pressure with or without groin traction if there is arrest of the bridge at or above the level of the ischial spine we prefer for cesarean section what is pinard's maneuver it is an intrauterine manipulation for bridge decomposition so as to convert a frank bridge to a footling bridge the middle and the index fingers are carried up to the popliteal fossa so that it is pre abducted and the fetal leg gets flexed 
Next, the fetal foot is grasped at the ankle and breech extraction is accomplished. What is Lopset's maneuver? This is a technique to deliver the fetal arm. The baby is wrapped in a warm dry towel. It is grasped using both hands by femoral pelvic grip, keeping the thumbs parallel to the vertebral column. Next, the baby is slightly lifted to cause lateral flexion. The trunk is rotated to 180 degree, keeping the back anterior and also maintaining a downward traction. This will cause the posterior arm to emerge under the pubic arc, which is then hooked out. Now we have to rotate the trunk in the reverse direction, keeping the back anterior so that the anterior shoulder is delivered under the symphysis pubis. Arrest of the aftercoming head. If there is arrest at the brim due to a deflexed head, the delivery is to be conducted, completed by malar flexion and shoulder traction along with suprapubic pressure by the assistant. The head is to be negotiated to the brim in the transverse diameter and rotated in the cavity. If the arrest of the head is due to a contracted pelvis or hydrocephalus, there is no way out but we need to perform perforation of the fetal head. If arrest occurs in the cavity, we should prefer a forceps delivery. And if there is arrest at the outlet, we go for episiotomy followed by forceps application or malar flexion and shoulder traction. 